Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved on God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Philemon, one chapter. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Paul is still in jail. This is one of all my uh, prison epistles. And Timothy, our brother, we've read about Timothy. He's with Paul. On to Philemon. The name of the book, our dearly, dearly beloved and fellow laborer. He is working and serving with Paul, the ministry of Paul. Fellow laborer, he's saved. He's saved. And to our beloved Athia, that's Philemon's wife, and Arch. Pus. You find him in Colossians 4.17. Our fellow soldier. This is the pastor. And to the church. <coughs> and to the church. <coughs> I'm sorry. In thy house. Philemon's house. There is a church in Philemon's house. Grace to you, Philemon, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There's more shock to come in this book than that uh, living room ministry. Oh, let me read on. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Philemon is the subject of Paul's prayers. Hearing of thy love and faith. Philemon loves and has faith. Which thou, the Philemon, has toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. He has love and faith to God first and then to the people that are saved. He has love and faith to the Lord Jesus and to the saved people. That the communication, the, the conduct, the living of thy faith may become effectual. That is, result from, produce, by the acknowledging of every good thing, Philippians 4 8, which is in you. In Christ Jesus he is living the faith it is become a produce it has added it has brought fruit he is aware of good things Philippians 1 9 but we Paul and the company have great joy and consolation in thy love. Some of you people that are listening to this, you think I'm going crazy or something, but I'm doing this for a reason. 
He has and is known of his love. Again, verse 5, verse 7, love. Because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. He helps and takes care of Christians. And Paul calls him a brother in the Lord. Interesting. The character of Philemon. Wherefore, though I, Paul, might be much bold in Christ, he's a little more bolder in Christ than Philemon is, to enjoin, which is order with urgency, the Philemon, that which is convenient. Here's the order. Yet for love's sake, we've already read the character of Philemon. He is bound in love. For love's sake, I rather beseech thee. He has a desire. He has a need. He's pleading. Being such and one at Paul the age. Paul's getting on with years. They don't call it elder. They call it the age. And now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Verse 1. He's, he's been put in jail for the word of God. I beseech thee. For my son Onesimus. Now this is not Paul's biological son. This is the same kind of son Timothy and Titus. These are men that were involved in Paul's ministry and who received the Lord Jesus Christ and Paul has taught them from being newborn and raised them to whenever they would have ability to show themselves of some kind of growth okay so we got a letter to Philemon we got his character we're talking about Paul here's a new man on the scene Onesimus whom I have begotten in my bonds. Titus 1 4, 1 Timothy 1 2. This is the subject of this letter. Which in times past, he was lost. Onathman was lost. Was to thee, Philemon, unprofitable. There was no good in Philemon when he was lost. In the duty of Philemon. But now, saved. Time passed, lost, now he saved. Profitable. So he has changed. He has definitely put off the new man and put on the new man. But now profitable to thee, Philemon, and to me, Paul. So Onesimus is of use for Paul when there was no use for him before. And Onesimus is also mentioned in Colossians 4, 9, and 4, 18. As a server. As a man accompanied with Paul for his work. Whom I have sent again, thou, Philemon, therefore receive him, Onesimus, that is my own bowels. This guy is saved. He's a product of the ministry I have. As me, we're Christians. I am sending this man back to you, Philemon. Now, here's the trouble. Let's look at the characters of this book and watch people turn the Bible off. And I don't care what you say. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what thoughts you have. Date is probably A.D. 64. Onesimus, which means profitable. That's his meaning of his name. 
was at one time unprofitable when he was lost. He is also, I'll give you time to sit down and relax and, and, and take into what is being said now. He was a slave of Philemon. Now, before you go jump down Philemon's back and, oh, this wicked man that had slaves, what did we just read that Paul said about? He's saved. He's got a church in his house. He is known for love and faith. He is helping Christians. He's a great fellow laborer with Paul's ministry. And he has a slave. He's from Colossae. Onesimus is a runaway slave who ran away and ended up under Paul ministry who got saved and became a worker in the service for Paul. And Paul is saying, Philemon, I'm writing you a letter that ends up in the book of the Bible, the 66th book. And what this letter is about is here's his runaway slave. I want him to come back to you. There's one difference. He was of no use to you before. I get that. Verse 11. But now he is, he is our brother in the Lord. He is saved. He is profitable to you. I want you to take him back. <gasps> Paul, you wicked fellow, you. You are sending a slave back to his slave owner. So you're supposed to put him on the Underground Railroad. Well, isn't it great that we got our own preconditioned ideas and our own thoughts, and yet we do not know history? The Bible speaks about slavery. There are laws in the law about slavery, and there is nothing that says you cannot have a slave. You are to treat them right. There were laws about runaway slaves that did not parallel with the laws that were in this country. And you need to realize before you get about the African American and the slaves that he has done in America, you need to realize the slaves that he done to God's people in the book of Exodus. You need to realize that there are slaves all over the world today. And you need to realize that when the Antichrist comes, your God of your planet Earth, one of the merchandise of Revelation mentions that he will also have and sell slaves. Slaves, it's a bad thing. But, you know, a person in America could be working under an employer and be slave to that employer. Because of nothing they can do, nothing else they can do, because they are bound to do what that employer does, because they need that money of hardship and living. See, we got we got to take the word slave and we got to put it to the public case. It can also be an employee employer. You can be a slave to a credit card company. I'm not going to say it's right. I'm not going to say it's wrong. I'm not going to talk about the history because the history is gone. It hasn't happened. But you know what? When it comes to this personal thing about slavery, it is happening today somewhere. And it could be not works. It could be a slave trade. It could be a sexual trade. And there is a case in the Bible. Now, 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 let's look at this too. Philemon, a slave owner. He is type of God the Father in this book. Paul is going to be a type of Jesus Christ. And Onesimus is a saved sinner. And do you know that before I was saved, I was enslaved to the world and Satan? I was lost and unprofitable to God in every shape and form. And I grew up in the Roman Catholic religion and everything I did was unprofitable to God. And when I became saved by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, 
the finished work of Calvary by the empty tomb. I am a Christian. I became profitable to God. More so for Christians who don't do anything for the Lord. Now I have become a servant voluntarily to God my Father. So I am still. I'm a saved saved. Saved slave. That's a tongue twister. But not if I have to. It's because I want to. There were some slaves that, you know what, they wanted to. They loved their master. It was recorded in the Bible. After a certain amount of time, you are to release that slave. And if he says, you know what, I love my master. I love my family. I want you to put an earring in my ear. And I'm going to become your faithful servant for life. And these idiots march around with earrings in their ear. And then proclaim that slavery is wrong. And they don't even know what the Bible says about a man with an earring. The hole in the ear. I'll leave you for the look at that in the Bible. It's called an awe. A-U-L. King James Bible would be most helpful. So this runaway slave runs into Paul. Whether he was arrested or not, Paul came across this guy. This guy, Philemon, I mean, excuse me, Onassis is saved. Paul has raised him up a little bit and now he says, you know what, it's time to go back to your, to your owner. Problem is, oh, it's not a problem. Your owner, Philemon, he's saved, he's a brother in Christ, and I know him. So Onassis, I want you to take this epistle, I want you to take it back to your boss, I want you to hand him this epistle that we are reading. This epistle we are reading was handed in the arms, in the hand, in the possession of a runaway slave who was saved going back to his boss. He did not go any further away. When he got the opportunity to run, he ran back to his master with this letter. That is authorized and inspired by the Holy Spirit of God to say this is one of the 66 books of our Bible. It's a personal letter. Whom I have sent again. I'm sending him back to you. That's why I stress all the pronouns for the 11 verses. This cruel, wicked slave owner. I have sent again. Thou therefore receive him, Onassimus, that is my own bowels. He, we're, we're saved, we're brethren. Take him back. And there's more to this story. Whom I would have retained with me. I want to keep him. Onassimus is so good in it. Remember what Paul did with Mark when Mark went, I don't want him. We know Paul is grown. Paul has aged himself. He says, Paul the age. But with, with Onassimus, I want to keep him with me. Even though I'm in jail, I want to keep him. He's of use. That in thy stead, yours, finally, he might have ministered unto me in the bounds of the gospel. I'm in jail, but Onassimus can be used with me and by me and you can get the credit finally you know we read about a wife will get the credit of her husband where you know if she stays home and does the work of the family while he goes out and wins souls she can get that credit and here is a slave master and a slave predicament and the slave that has run away is doing the work of the lord and paul says this can be credited to you finally you know? Paul is not speaking against slavery at all. But this slave owner can get part of Onassimus' rewards. He is owned by Philemon. And Paul is sending him back. But he said, you know what? I want to keep him for the gospel. In my bonds, in me being in jail, I can use this man. But I have to send him back to you. He is your property. Oh, 
Oh, 911, you want to go get those people off the floor and give them CPR and, and check their heart rate? Because I think they just died. They may have turned off the, the you know, turned the thing back on while you re resuscitate them. Because that's what the Bible says. I'm sorry. You don't like it? You go up to God and you tell God how you feel. I'm just reading the black and white, the words. So if you proclaim to be slaves and all that, you know what the Bible says? Get back to your master and serve the Lord and get saved. And then you don't know what kind of freedom you're going to get. Because God will allow Philemon to let Onesimus go and serve the Lord. So he does not be retained anymore as a slave of Philemon. You are a slave to the slave trade because you are under slave of Satan and will not trust God and Jesus Christ as your Savior. But, I know you won't mind, but without thy mind, would I do nothing? I know you don't I know you won't have any care about Onassis staying with me. I know that. Paul knows Philemon well. That thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but of willingly. I'm sending this man back to you, Philemon, because you know what? He's yours. I want you to know he's saved. I want to keep him. But I need your permission. This man needs to appear before you, Philemon, because he has done you injustice. He has done you wrong. He has to confess his sins that he has done for you before he can be the work of the ministry. So if you've done your parents or your employer wrong and then you've gotten saved, you have a right to go up to those people you've done wrong and make it right, what you can Philemon's like, okay, you know, you can have them. That's what Paul's saying. But I need your permission. If you're going to let him come back to me and do work, it's got to be you willingly. This is not necessary. This, I, this is not by force. You want to keep him? You keep him. But I'd like to have him back. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season. He left you. He was a runaway slave for a while. I'm sending him back. And the runaway part when he comes to you. That thou shouldest receive him forever. Now, unlike the parable of the, or the story of the prodigal son. When that boy comes running down the street and sees his father, his father comes running to him. Man, they both know what they want. They want the love restored as a father and son. When this man turns back to Philemon, Philemon has no idea what's happening, what's going on. As far as he knows, until he gets this letter, you were one of my slaves. And Onassis, man, he is hopping, skipping in her heart. I got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. And I'm saved. And wait till he reads his letter. And then we'll guarantee when he reads his letter, it's like, oh boy, you're one of you one of us? You're saved? You're a child of God? And then by Colossians 4, 9 and 4, 18, we know finally him sets him free. Go ahead, go. Go serve the Lord. Thou shouldst receive him for or if he's going to stay. Receive him. Not now as a servant. The old man. The, the slave. The lost man. But above a servant. A brother beloved. There is a new man. The new creature. Finally, when he comes to you, you think he's that slave. You think he's that runaway slave, but guess what? Put your arms around this guy. Give him a kiss. Welcome, because he is our brother. Now, can you just see the, 
the tears of this man now. Here he is standing at a guy who had no use, no purpose. He's gone. He's marching up the driveway, he's marching up the path, whatever it is, and we're saved. And I come from Paul, which they both know. And Paul really wants to use me, but I am yours. And again, Colossians 4, 9 and 4, 18. He lets, he lets, um, I keep on saying one finally. 4, 9 and 18, he lets Onesimus go and serve the Lord. That is how overjoyed Philemon was. Go. I could keep you here, but if Paul can use you, if Paul has great characteristics speaking of you, go. Go and serve the Lord, brother. Now let me ask you, I don't know, maybe I'm reading the story, maybe this is wrong, if it is, I confess the blood of Jesus Christ is a fault, but what if Onassis had family working with Philemon? Wouldn't that be a little more closer to finally maybe put a little more attention to them? I don't know. I, that's that's extra. I could be wrong. Beloved brother, especially to me, Paul. Man, Paul has respect for Onassis, the runaway slave. But how much more unto thee? Think about what this guy can do for you finally on now. He's saved. He's a child of God. He might be able to witness to all your slaves. Maybe some of them you can't, you can't get a hold of. Some of them you can't reach out to. Here comes one of them. Maybe he can get to them. I don't know. He can do you good now finally. This is how well Onassis got saved and showed his word. Not of faith, but works also. That Paul is pleased with him. Paul wants him. This man has remarkably became a new creature in Christ. Unto thee, Philemon, both in the flesh, as a servant, and in the Lord as your brother. This man is profitable. He's going to work for you. He's going to serve the Lord for you. If thou, Philemon, count me therefore a partner, 2 Corinthians 8.23, receive him as myself. Take this man home and take him as my own person. As if it were me coming to your house. That says a lot for the Onassimus by the words of Paul. If he, Onassimus, has wronged thee or owe thee aught, man, you need to mark this down. You need to write this down. Put that on my account. That is the imputation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says, whatever Onassis owes you, whatever he has done for you, whatever wrong there is, <coughs> put, a, put, put the bill owed to me. I'll pay it. And when the Father looks at us and Jesus Christ says, Father, I paid for him. The finished work of the cross and the empty tomb he is your son because of me. It has all been put upon me, Isaiah 53. Really, son? Yes. He has put his faith and trust in me, Father. I don't see a servant no more. I see my son. The greatest story, the imputation of Jesus Christ of a lost sinner is by a slave and a slave owner with Apostle Paul. For there is no mediator between God and man but the Lord Jesus Christ. John says in 1 John, uh, let's go there, this needs to be read. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. I mean, this is so great. In a slave book. You know why many people of that span are not getting saved today because they don't see the glory of god they're rejecting the bible by their rebellion 
My little children, these things write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Isn't Paul righteous? And he is the appropriation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. When you become a child of God, you have put all your sins upon Jesus Christ. And Paul gives his greatest time. Whatever he has done you wrong, I'll pay that bill. Jesus says, whatever sin, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I took it on the cross. Acts 20, 28, the blood of Jesus Christ. Imagine finding that in a slave book. Mark that. Write that down. Highlight. However you mark your Bible. It's to put on someone else's account. Imputation. I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. Oh. You know what Paul's saying there? Some Bibles are rightfully the words of Christ are in red. The Holy Spirit has written it down. These things have I written that you may, that you might know you have eternal life. John concludes the gospel. These things are written that you can be saved. I will repay it. Paul. Paul has done nothing to Philemon. And yet, he takes the payment. Paul, Jesus Christ has done nothing. And he has taken my payment, which I've done it all. I've run away from God many times before I was saved. I run away from God in rebellion sometimes now that I am saved. But I have that advocate. Albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thy own self. Beside. Oh, Paul. Philemon, you owe me your life. Okay, you want to write that one down finally? You know, what, you know what Jesus Christ, you know what God could say? To hell with you. Oh, Jesus. I'm worthy of death before God the Father. But Jesus laid down his life. Yea, brother, talking to finally We got two brothers here in the Lord. We got one Philemon and one Onassimus. Let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. I, you know, Paul, I know you're going to set him free. I know you're going to send him to me. But I need to send him to you. Because that's also in the law too. And I want your permission as this man that you own. And I trust and believe that you're going to do all that you can do for this now profitable man. Remember, Philemon is God and Paul is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ going to the Father. Father, I can see you're going to excellently bless this man. You know, God has excellently blessed me. I am not going to hell and I've done nothing. I have the opportunity to earn rewards and, and crowns. I've done nothing. God has mercifully blessed and, and shown me grace. I don't deserve it. He has pardoned me. I'm guilty. And all the excellent blessings that God has done for me by Jesus Christ, there is to be on. I am wonderfully, wonderfully, gracelessly blessed. Because of Jesus Christ, my God the Father. Man, I can't even get into eternal life. No sin, no pain, no sorrow. I don't deserve that. And it's all by Jesus Christ who paid. Who suffered and died for me. And you know what, you know what Jesus is saying to God about this slave, me, Father. I have use for him. 
Let me use them. Send them to me so I can send them out to do something. We are called by the book of Philemon to go out and serve Jesus Christ as Jesus pleads to the Father that has the wrath of God upon me without Jesus. Can I use him, Father? But I have to come to Jesus first. And then Jesus says to the Father, let's have use for him. Let's use him. And if you don't do anything for Jesus Christ, shame and shame and shame to you. You are selfish. But with all, prepare me also a lodging. Um, at the right hand of, of your throne, Father. Acts chapter 1. Paul being a type of Jesus Christ. Where is the lodging Jesus Christ right now? He is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. For I trust that... Through your prayers, I shall be given unto you. Yes, that's where Jesus is seated today, at the right hand of the Father. Therefore, salute thee, Aphrodite. Colossians 1, 7. My fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus. So here's a guy who was either still in jail, was done time with Paul. But whatever it is, in times past, these two guys were in jail together for the Lord. And he's now with Philemon in his <coughs> church, in his <coughs> house, <coughs> his living room ministry. Marcus, Acts 12, 12, and 25. Aristarchus, Acts 19, 20. Look at the people that Philemon knows. He knows people that are serving the Lord and doing right. And yet he's a slave owner. Demas. Do you remember what 2 Timothy 4.10 said about Demas? He was doing right. He was under finally <coughs> a house church ministry. And doing right. Lucas. My fellow laborers. Demas was saved and left the Lord. And he went to the wrong place. He went to Thessalonica where they served the Lord with all love, care, and mercy, and grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. What a wonderful great book, Philemon. It speaks of me, a worthless, vile. Before April 1987, I was worthless and vile. If I would have died, I would have gone off to hell. I am saved now by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, let me use him. Let me use. I am to be a clean vessel. I am to be profitable to God. So Jesus, hey, I got use for him. Too many times I'm unclean. I'm not profitable. I've sinned. 